Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm talking about On One Photo Raw 2021 and basically about six months ago, so last fall, like November or whenever it was, that this came out, I did a couple of videos about it. I got On One Photo Raw 2021 at that time and said, you know, I'm going to check this out because I had 2020 and I did a couple of videos on that and then I got busy doing other things and never got back to it. So when 2021 came out, I decided, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna get better at On One. It seems powerful. I remember it being pretty cool in version 2020. I, I need to know this thing. So I set about going after it. And at that time, six months ago, I did a couple of videos and then, hey, I got busy doing other things and blah, blah, blah. And I never really got back to it. About three months ago now, I, uh, I, I decided, all right, this time I'm serious. I'm really doing it. I promise I'm gonna do it. And so, I jumped in back, uh, I should say, back into On One Photo Raw 2021, and I've really made a concerted effort to get better at it, to learn the tool, and to really explore the creative options and all the different tools and all the kind of stuff you can do because, let's be honest, there's a lot. I mean, it's a very powerful tool. It's got so many amazing things that you can do, and I shudder to use this word, but in many ways it's complex. And I don't mean complex like, oh my gosh, it's hard, I'll never figure it out. I mean complex like you can do really complex things and really powerful things and you have a lot of control over your photos. And sure, there's a learning curve just like there is with anything unless it's a one-click automatic kind of adjustment. But despite that, it's not complex really once you get into it and start kind of what I call flipping rocks. You know, you're flipping rocks to see what's underneath them, and that's what I've been doing. And this flipping rocks approach has really taken me from a bit of a beginner, and I look at my early videos about On One 2021, and I was like, yeah, I didn't know it that well, and now I'm getting much more into it, the masking and all the different things you can do. So I'm gonna walk through kind of an example of how it kind of morphed from a uh, don't know much about it to a, uh, a person that's, you know, reasonably competent. I'm not an expert, I'm not a master of it, I'm pretty good, I've got more uh, room to grow, as they say, and I'm looking forward to that, but I'm gonna keep using it. So, as I've started many times, um, I first cropped and I took a few spots out, but one of the first things that I started learning about was actually outside of the tone and color here in Develop, was Transform. There's a fantastic uh, option here called Keystone, which allows you to move these things around to line up with the different straight edges so that you can then straighten your photo and get it just the way you want it to, to look in terms of straightness, and that's not exactly it, but you can easily fix it with these additional tools here. Just rotating, this one seems a little bit crooked. That looks better. You've got these horizontal and vertical uh, adjustments as well, so if you wanna further refine that, you can do so, and horizontal goes left and right, as you can imagine. I don't really need to do that, but that little bit of transform took it from looking like that, which now seems a little bit off, to that, which to me seems much straighter and much better. So, very powerful control, but then I really got into this section of toning color, where you're doing things like contrast, and maybe pulling up some of the mid-tones, and maybe some of the shadows, and maybe even lifting the whites, and I tend to do some global temperature and vibrance type things here, and you know, this this is my setting the stage kind of area where I just like kind of I'm getting it ready for editing basically and I feel like that's what I've done and so the next thing I started to do is you know I did play with effects and I bounced around in there a little bit but then I was thinking you know local adjustments that's what I really need to do and so I went over to local adjustments and I started playing with them and what I realized is that local adjustments they're designed to be masks and one of the or masked in, or masking is designed for, whatever you want to say, but they're designed to be used in combination with masks. And what I found is that, for me, one of the best and easiest things to do is to create a luminosity mask. And so I've done that here with a simple, simple click. I'm clicking on view, and as you may know, a luminosity mask is a mask based on light values. The lighter areas get more of the edit, and the darker areas get less but there's ways you can refine that, and that is with levels, which I've dove into as well. And this is just something where you simply experiment, and basically you just try to find the right balance between what's dark and what's light, so that you can get those colors and tones that you adjust here in the local adjustment the way you want them to look. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click view off of there, and I'm gonna reset exposure. And basically, in case you didn't notice, let me go back. It's wider in the sky and on those buckets and a little bit in the foreground. So this is a kind of a sky adjustment. So I think what I'll do here is maybe add a tiny bit of an increase in exposure. 
maybe a little bit of a temperature reduction as well to create a little bit more blue. I actually think I'm going to lift the whites, which will help those uh, kind of potted plant areas. And I think I've got a nice looking little photo. And then I started discovering, you know what you can do? You can copy these masks and reuse them. So you click copy, come in here to add adjustment. I get another one, and this time I click paste. But I don't want to edit the same area. I want to edit the opposite area. So I invert, and let me hit re reset on exposure. So that's not impacting. And then if I want to view this, this is the inverted mask. Once again, you can further customize it if you want to. So you might come in here, and this time I'm working pretty much on everything except the sky and the buckets. And so I'm going to come in here and try to refine that mask a little bit and get it looking the way I want it to look. So I think something about like that is going to do fine for this example. So now I've kind of isolated those areas which are white. Let me show you again. So not the sky, not the planter boxes, but definitely the castle, the trees, and some of the walkway. Now you can refine that further if you want to, and that's another thing I learned, is you can go in and now get a brush and further refine that luminosity mask and literally paint areas out if you don't want them touched at all. But now that I've got that area isolated, I might increase that exposure. I might give it a little bit of contrast. I might give it a little bit of structure as well. Maybe a slight temperature adjustment just to the right to bring up a little bit of that earth tone. Maybe a slight tint as well. To apply, it gives a little bit more, um, I think a little bit richer look in the kind of yellowy areas by giving it some of that tint and maybe a little bit of vibrance too. And so now after two local adjustments, I've got a photo that looks vastly different and I really haven't done very much. So there it is with no local adjustments. There it is with the first one, which was mostly the sky and like the planter boxes. And then here it is with the second one, which was more of the non-sky, non-planter boxes. And then at this point in my experiments, I decided, hey, you know what else I'd like to do? I'd like to get better at effects. And so I came over to effects, and one of the first ones I really started playing with, and that's because it's an old habit, and that is HDR look, simply because on certain things like man-made structures, I kind of like to amp up that HDR look. But again, this was a masking thing for me where I came in and said, you know, I like it, but I don't want it everywhere. I want to control. How do I control that mask even better, in this case, than a luminosity mask? And I quickly learned that AI Quick Mask is a great way to do that, where you can just paint in that you want to keep the sky and then come over here and with the drop, you can paint in and tell it that you want to drop the foreground, the castle, and everything else. And so you just do that and you hit apply and you let that mask calculate and you find that you have a basically a perfect mask in a couple of seconds. And so now what I've done, if you look at the view of the mask, I've got a sky that's separate from everything else, but I don't want that. I want the HDR look in the foreground. So once again, just a quick inversion, you flip it and you come over here and you apply HDR look to your heart's content to crunch up some of those foreground areas. Well, gosh, I really like that. So I'm going to copy that again and I'm going to go get dynamic contrast. And now I'm going to paint or paste that mask here so that I apply this in the same areas. And once again, I've created just a little bit more crunch in those foreground areas. But now I'm going to use dynamic contrast again because I really like this tool. And now I'm going to paste that one more time. But of course, this time I'm going to invert it because I want to apply this mask to the sky. And this is me just reducing the intensity of the clouds and just smoothing out that sky and creating a much softer look. And gosh, I really like that. So now I'm going to copy that mask and I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to get color enhancer, which is, you know, a tool that I really like. And so here, I'm going to actually first, I'm going to go ahead and paste this mask so that I'm just working on the sky. And again, I'm just going to cool it off a little bit and maybe create a little bit more vibrance as well. Maybe a little bit cooler and a little bit of saturation and a little bit of vibrance. And then maybe I'll come down here to the blues and just take the brightness down a little bit. And there you go. So now before and after, I've done a great job of isolating that sky. You know, and then I continue to experiment with all of these things. And I've learned that, you know, Tone Enhancer is a fantastic tool for doing things that you kind of did in the Develop tab and you may have kind of done in local adjustments, but now maybe you want to come back and do something that's a little bit more global in scope. And even though you're on the Effects tab where you might want to mask things in, you might want to come do a few additional things like add some detail or add some clarity and just give a little bit of extra kick to the photo overall 
And you can see the before tone enhancer and the after with a little bit of that clarity and detail and some of those other light and tone adjustments. And so the other thing I've done, and I won't cover all of the things I've been doing in these videos, is experimenting with all these different filters here because there's so many. I've used antique, I've used textures, vignette, you've got vintage, you've even got weather. We can drop rain and snow and things like that into your photo. You've got LUTs, which I've really grown to love. You've got lens blur, so you can simulate things like tilt shift effects. And of course, you've got blur and borders. You've got so many different tools, and that's really what I've been doing is figuring out how can I dive in and really learn this product and get from you know, somewhat of a beginner to a you know, more advanced user. Again, not an expert, not a master. I've got a long way to go. In fact, there's so much in on one that I haven't even touched on. So if you go back out, by the way, let me show you what we've done to this photo so far. It started like that, and that's a pre-crop, of course, but there it is before, and there it is now. Much more impactful, bright, vibrant photo. And if I wasn't doing all this talking, that was less than 10 minutes of work probably more like five or six, and you get a much different photo that I think has some nice enhancements to it. Now, am I finished with the photo? I don't really know, but I mean, if you look at the before and after in the comparison of what we've done here, just kind of walking through some of the things that I've been experimenting with in my videos and working on in my photos has got me to a place where I've got a photo that I quickly was able to achieve without a lot of work. And like I said, that's one of the things I love about On One. Spend a little time and it gives back to you in terms of your learning and your knowledge and your ability to look at a scene and discern pretty quickly what you want to do. And then, of course, into it, how do I get there and how do I get there quickly and what tools are the best ones for me to get there. On top of that, in the Browse module, just to kind of back up a little bit, the things I haven't spent a lot of time on are things like layers. I did a layers video where I replaced a sky. You can do so much. I mean, it's just powerful. I've done nothing with panos because I don't ever shoot them. I've done one video on HDR and I've done nothing with focus stacking because I don't really do that, but there's so much you can do. And by the way, going back into edit, there's a whole tab dedicated to portrait. I've done a video there. I need to do more. There's so much to talk about. I'm having so much fun and learning so much and sharing with you guys. And to be honest, half the time you guys leave me comments teaching me things. And so I love that. I love the interactivity of this group here in this community. You guys are a lot of fun. But my point in this video is really that three months later, going from not really knowing a whole lot about on one, just kind of knowing the basics and kind of for lack of a better word, blindly stumbling around in the dark, I feel like I've come a really long way in terms of my knowledge of the product. And I'm hoping that this serves as some kind of inspiration or you know, some sort of help to you to show you that you can quickly and easily move from, you know, one level of understanding the tool to the next level and on and on and on. And like I said, I've got several more levels of learning to go, but I'm having a heck of a good time on this journey. I'm going to keep sharing more videos and tips and tricks as I get deeper and deeper into this. And I think a year from now, I'm going to look back and think, you know, even though I think I know a pretty good amount now, I think a year from now, I'm going to look back and say, Man, I, I didn't really know anything. I can't believe I was even making videos. I knew nothing about what I was talking about. But, you know, I hope that's the case. I hope I look back on these videos and just think, God, I was an amateur. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just look forward to continuing to learning, uh, you know, learn more and involve, evolve my techniques and my tips and tricks so I can share with you guys. And I appreciate the interactivity. Three months later from now, six months of going deep on this product, I think I'm going to be a whole lot even further more advanced than I am now. So thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate you guys hanging out. This was less of a tutorial and more of like a, I don't know what you call it, a, a demonstration of my progression in the tool, for lack of a better word. But I hope mostly that it gives you an idea that you can progress. Just practice, practice, practice. Flip rocks, try things, check them out. You're going to fail. You're going to screw things up. You can always reset the photo and start over. I've done that countless times. And I'll continue to do it countless times because I stumble a lot and it may not look like it because I sit here and record videos, but I screw up all the time. And then I'm going to scratch my head and think, how do I go fix that? And then I go figure it out and you learn something and you find that you start leveling up quicker and quicker and learning more. So it's fun. It's exciting. I keep learning. I hope that it helps you. Thank you for watching, my friends. You guys are great. I'll see you in the next video, which will be really soon. Take care of yourselves out there and adios.